Okay, so having just looked at the product rule, let's go ahead and look at the quotient rule. I want to compute the derivative of f divided by g. How can I do that? Well, it turns out that this is the way we can piece together the derivative of the quotient involving the original functions and their derivatives. You take the derivative of the top function, that f, multiplied by the bottom function, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function, and write that all over the bottom function squared. So this is how I'm going to think about it. Derivative of the quotient, derivative of the top times the bottom, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. So let's have a look at some examples. Differentiate 2t squared minus 1 over t cubed plus 1. So what is it? So the derivative, oh, in this case, got to get the variable right. We're differentiating with respect to t of 2t squared minus 1 all over t cubed plus 1. So it's the derivative of the top times the bottom function. So the bottom function is untouched, and we're multiplying by the derivative of the top. Minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. Okay, and this was by the quotient rule. Now we can go ahead, there's still these derivatives that we still have to evaluate, that we still have to compute. All the quotient rule did was break it down into an expression where, which involved the original functions and the derivatives of the original functions. Now we can go ahead and compute the derivatives of those, the original functions being the two factors, the derivatives of those factors. t cubed plus 1, what's the derivative of the top function? That is 4t. And then that's 2t squared minus 1. What's the derivative of the bottom function? That's 3t squared. And all of that is over t cubed plus 1, all squared. And so there's our derivative. Let's have a look at the next example. Differentiate e to the negative x. OK. We know how to differentiate e to the x. This is e to the negative x. How do we differentiate that? Well. We can look at it as a quotient. It is 1 over e to the x. Now, to find its derivative, we can use the quotient rule. What's the quotient rule applied to this? Well, it's the derivative of the top function times the bottom. So the derivative of the top function is the derivative of 1 times the bottom function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Ah, but the derivative of the top function, the derivative of a constant, is 0. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And so we've got an e to the x on top and e to the x squared on the bottom. And so one of those e to the x's on top cancels with 1 on the bottom and gives us a negative 1 over e to the x, which we can rewrite as negative e to the negative x. And so there is our derivative. So let's have a look at this last example. It's going to involve a collection of the sum rule, the quotient rules, and uh, difference rules, and all of that. The key here is, though, that we don't have expressions for f and g. All we have is a couple of values of the functions and their derivatives. So we're focusing in this example explicitly on the differentiation rules. Let's have a look at this first one. What's the derivative of f plus g at 3? Well, the sum rule tells us that it's the sum of their individual derivatives. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. f prime of 3 is negative 6. g prime of 3 is 5. So our result in this case is negative 1. But the next one. The derivative of the product, well, that's the product rule. It's the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. And what are these values? f of 3 is 4. g prime of 3 is 5. g of 3 is 2. 
f prime of 3 is negative 6. So this is 20 minus 12, or 8. What about f divided by g prime at 3? That's the quotient rule. So this is the derivative of the top function times the bottom function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. f prime of 3 is negative 6. g of 3 is 2. f of 3 is 4. g prime of 3 is 5. And all of that's over g of 3 squared. So that's 2 squared. So this is negative 12 minus 20 all over 4. Or negative 32 over 4, which is negative 8. Okay, how about the next example? f over f minus g prime. So this is going to be a collection of a few different rules. We see there's a quotient, we see there's a difference, or a sum, if you want to think of it that way, f minus g. How are we going to do this? Well, it's important to look at this and say, what is the outermost operation? What's the very last thing that's being done? This is a collection of some function divided by some other function. So at the outermost level, this is a quotient rule. So this is the derivative of the top function times the bottom function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. What's f prime of 3? f prime of 3 was negative 6. What is f minus g of 3? Well, that's f of 3 minus g of 3. Fill in what those values are in a second. What is f of 3? f of 3 is 4. What is f of minus g prime, well that is f prime of 3 minus g prime of 3, the difference of their derivatives. And all of that is over f of 3 minus g of 3, all squared. So this was negative 6, f of 3 is 4, g of 3 is 2, minus f of f prime of 3 is negative 6, g prime of 3 is 5, so that's minus 5, all over f of 3 minus g of 3, so that's 4 minus 2, all squared. So it's 4 minus 2, so that's negative 12, that's negative 11 times 4, that's for, uh, negative 44 with the extra negative sign out there, that's plus 44 all over 2 squared, all over 4. So that's going to be negative 3 plus 11, or in other words, 8. Alright, so that's it for this section. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time.